Welcome, visitor, to Thermopylae. My name is Leonidas. I am a king of Sparta. But do not think me some idle aristocrat softened by luxury. When Spartans go to war, I stand alongside them, shield to shield. And my spear tastes the same blood as those of my men. Thermopylae stirs many feelings in my heart. Rage at the Persians' arrogance. Regret that I could not do more. But mostly, I feel proud. Proud of my city, and of my men, who fought to protect the very soul of the Spartan people. For those few faithful days, they were my brothers. I miss them all. Thermopylae was where a courageous group of Spartans stood amongst other Greek soldiers and held off the forces of King Xerxes, the Persian. When you're done, find me and we'll speak more. The Persian king Darius's cries of rage echoed for years after his humiliating defeat at Marathon. Even after Darius's death, his son Xerxes continued to seek vengeance against the Greeks. According to Aeschylus, Asia was emptied of all its men. Greek spies brought the news of Xerxes's imminent invasion back to their homeland. Afterwards, many discussions were had on the best place to mount a defense. In the end, the Greeks decided on Thermopylae. The area featured a narrow pass that could act as a bottleneck for the Persian army, negating their numerical superiority. It also offered naval advantages, offering the Greek fleets opportunities for flanking. 5,000 Peloponnesian Greeks set up at a fort near the entrance of the narrow passage, otherwise known as the Hot Gates. Leading them was Leonidas, a Spartan king who prided himself on supposedly being a direct descendant of Heracles. Leonidas was accompanied by several elite soldiers who together made up the famous 300 Spartans. The Persian king Darius's cries of rage, even after Darius, according to East Greek spies, in the end, it all finally. The Persian army arrived in the summer of 480 BCE, preceded by a flood of rumors regarding their strength and numbers. It was claimed they consumed 6,000 tons of wheat every day, and that they dried every river and brook they passed 
to quench their near insatiable thirst. During their march to Thermopylae, the Persians faced no opposition and in fact increased their numbers further by recruiting more soldiers from other Greek cities and places like Thrace. According to Herodotus, the last count of the Persian fleet was numbered at 1,207 boats mounted by approximately 240,000 men. He estimates the land army, meanwhile, was made up of more than one million men. The Greek forces at Thermopylae were heavily outnumbered. Xerxes believed that at the sight of his massive army, the Greeks at Thermopylae would flee in terror. Instead, they deliberated. The majority of the Peloponnesians wanted to engage the Persians on the Isthmus of Corinth. Leonidas, meanwhile, believed it was wiser to stay put in Thermopylae. While the Greek forces debated, a Persian horseman was sent to spy on the enemy. He returned to Xerxes with surprising news. Not only were the Greeks not fleeing, but the Spartans guarding the fort were exercising and combing their hair. A far cry from the fearful soldiers Xerxes expected. To increase the pressure on the Greeks, Xerxes waited four more days, then attacked on the fifth. The Persians faced heavy resistance and suffered many losses. And Herodotus says Xerxes leaped three times from his chair, seized with fear for his army. The following day proved to be just as difficult for the Persian forces, and the Greeks continued to stand their ground. The Persians seemed poised to be held at Thermopylae indefinitely until an inhabitant from the region came forward with information. He told the Persians of another route which could take them around Thermopylae. A Persian contingent was sent to verify the information. While there were Greek soldiers stationed to guard the route, they were forced to flee from the Persians. Thus, on the third day of the battle, the Greeks were surrounded by their enemy. With the Persians both in front of and behind them, the Greek forces at Thermopylae realized they had two choices, flee to live another day or stand and fight till their last breath. Most of the Greeks chose the former option, but some stayed, including Leonidas and his 300 Spartans. For the Spartans, dying a glorious death was one of the highest honors they could achieve. The few members of Leonidas' Spartans who did not participate in the last stand at Thermopylae, felt that they had missed an opportunity for honor and either committed suicide or continued living under the mockery and disgust of their fellow citizens. The Spartans' last stand was not only for glory, though. Had they not hold off the Persians, the Greeks' retreating forces would probably have been cut down by enemy horsemen.
On the morning of the third day, King Xerxes was assured of his victory. However, that victory did not come easy. King Leonidas himself fell in battle, and a furious fight broke out around his body. The Spartans fought to the last man, and when they had all been slain, Leonidas' body was brought before Xerxes. According to Herodotus, Persians usually honored the most courageous warriors, even if they were enemies. However, Xerxes was so consumed by rage at the Spartans' resistance that instead he cut off Leonidas' head and ordered it impaled on a stake. A statue of a lion was later erected on the hill of the Spartans' last stand in honor of Leonidas' bravery. Though they were victorious, the Battle of Thermopylae shook the morale of the Persian army. They had lost thousands of men, while Greek casualties only numbered in the hundreds. And due to the sacrifice of the Spartans, the rest of the Greek army had been able to successfully retreat and regroup. As a result, even as Xerxes set up camp at the foot of Athens's Acropolis, ready to get revenge for his father's humiliating defeat at Marathon, the Persians were more anxious than confident. They were more aware than ever that the Greeks did not fear them and were ready to die defending their land. In the end, the Battle of Thermopylae was still a loss for the Greeks. However, the battle gave the Greeks a boost in morale that carried them all the way to their decisive victory over the Persians in the Battle of Plataea in 479 BCE. With the war against the Persians finally won, the Greeks were able to honor the sacrifice of Leonidas and his Spartans with memorials and poems, forever solidifying the glory of Sparta's military prowess. The newfound respect for Sparta was noteworthy because before the war, the city was seen as no more than a bully who forced itself into the affairs of others. Thermopylae changed the opinions of Sparta for the better and gave them a legitimate claim to be one of Greece's most powerful and influential cities.
you finished. I hope you understand the magnitude of the sacrifices made at Thermopylae. Without them, the Greek people would have surely ended as a footnote in Persian history. Is there something else you'd like to do? If you think you're ready, let's begin. First question. Who was Xerxes' father? Yes. One of the main reasons Xerxes invaded Greece was to get revenge for Darius' defeat at the Battle of Marathon. Another question for you. Which battle is seen as the final victory against Xerxes' Persian forces? Correct. The Battle of Plataea helped put an end to Xerxes' invasion. One last question. How many Spartans fought at the Battle of Thermopylae? Yes, 300 of us stood against Xerxes' forces. You've done well, visitor. I have no more questions for you. Farewell, visitor.